there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. This international radio ministry was birthed by the Holy Spirit from a vision I experienced in April 1998 while working as director of marketing for TBN in Irving, Texas. In mid-afternoon of that April day, 1998, the Holy Spirit called me to the chapel. I walked in, and the Lord dealt with me in a personal way about transgressions, and after I had repented, then a vision unfolded, like a movie screen in front of my eyes. I saw American cities on fire. I saw American refugees fleeing on foot to escape the devastation left behind them. The Holy Spirit said to me, this is your nation's future if America does not repent. I asked the Lord why. He showed it to me. And he said, I'm calling you today to tell the American people to repent. I reminded him that he had just chastised me for my own sins. And he said, I didn't call you because you're holy. I called you because you're a good repenter. When I convict you, you repent. Now go tell the American people to do the same, and I will forgive them. Without knowing about the vision I saw that afternoon, my daughter Carissa was visited by Jesus Christ that very night while she was sleeping. The next morning, she told me about it. She said it wasn't a dream, but Jesus stood at her bed and spoke directly to her. He said, Daughter, beginning tonight, I will speak to you about the last days through dreams and visions. He gave her a dream. Our family was huddled together, surrounded by thousands of skeletons. The skeletons were shouting to me in a loud voice, If you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you tell us? I personally shared the vision and my daughter's dream and a face-to-face private meeting with the late Dr. Paul Crouch. Months later, I informed Dr. Crouch that God was calling me to full-time ministry and that I had to resign from TBN. In early September 1998, I walked out the door of the TBN complex in Irving, Texas, and I began to tell everybody who would listen what the Lord revealed to me. And this radio program was born on one station in Dallas-Fort Worth on May 24, 1999. The rest is history. I've been on the radio ever since, retelling the story, calling this country to repentance, warning the American people of coming judgment. When the attacks struck America on September 11, 2001, I was not surprised. I was grieved and deeply saddened, but not surprised. I knew what it meant. The vision had started to unfold in reality. I quickly came to understand that all the things God showed me in that vision in 1998 would not happen soon, but instead would gradually unfold over many years. The American people did not repent of their gross sins after September 11, 2001, just the opposite. 
They rebelled against God. They stiffened their necks and defied the one true living God of the universe. The American church did not repent either. Instead, they they have foolishly wasted their time pursuing their best life now. It is now 2014. America is farther from God than it has ever been. Homosexuality fills the nation. Many states have legalized same-sex marriage, something that has not been done since the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. America is in grave danger, but it doesn't know it. Pride, arrogance, and luxurious living have blinded the eyes of the American people and their leaders, just as those sins blinded the eyes of the leaders of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Americans think that they are invincible. Neither do they fear God. Our leaders are foolishly preparing to challenge Russia over a spot of land called Crimea. It may be our Waterloo. My friend Steve Quayle sent an email to me on Thursday, March 13. It contained a dream experienced by violinist Maurice Sklar. His website is mauricesklar.com. And he's on the phone right now to share that dream with us. Maurice, welcome back to True News. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Yes, sir. I have to tell you, I much more prefer hearing your violin than your dreams. I know. Me too. <laughs> your, dream, your, your violin makes me feel very peaceful. Your dreams disturb me. Well, you know, this is the first... Actually, I haven't had that many prophetic dreams, very rarely. I've had visions and I've had words, but not... not this was something special. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like it. Well, it comes with age. Old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you've crossed the line, Maurice. Oh, no. You're not having the visions anymore. You're having the dreams. <laughs> I... I hadn't thought of that till just now. Yes, but. sir. Yeah, Joel, Joel explains it to us. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, listen, I think what what we should do, we have plenty of time. It's a very detailed dream. And I would like you just to read it word for word as you send it out to everybody on March 13. Would you just okay. go ahead and read it? Sure. Um, all right. Um, just a little background that I... We just got back from Israel. We go uh, every year with uh, Governor Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, to, on his tour, and we were there last month. And I got back, and we were tired, and I'm just I'm at home, and and uh, it was an early morning. Uh, wasn't planning anything like this, but <clears throat> so this is this is. Uh, I wrote it down uh, right after, and it's uh, this is called Tribulation Dream the angel of the Lord over the Statue of Liberty. This week I had a dream. It was a terribly frightening dream. In it I saw a huge angel standing, suspended in the air over New York Harbor. It looked so large that it covered the night sky. His body was clad in golden armor as if he were going to war. His face and entire being were so bright that I could not gaze up at him for long. White beams of light seemed to radiate outward from him in all directions. He was standing over the Statue of Liberty. It was night, but I could hardly see the lights around him coming from New York City as he blazed so brightly with divine light. He reached for his belt that was covered with a red sash around his midsection and drew out his sword. It was so massive, it blazed with light and fire all around it. It looked at least a hundred feet long. I've never felt such fear when I saw an angel before. I just knew this mighty warring spirit had authority from the very throne of God. He had a grim expression as he held his mighty sword over his head with both hands. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. I trembled and tried to hide. But the angel was looking directly at me, and I knew there was nowhere to go, that he would not see me. Then he spoke, 
His voice was like thunder and echoed through the, throughout the whole harbor. He said, How long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? <clears throat> you have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Your beginning was great and noble, but your end shall be disgrace and destruction. Thus saith the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, Time is running out. The bowls of my wrath are full of my fury and judgment. They shall be poured out upon you. You shall drink them down to the dregs every drop. I have come to you day and night, pleading with you to return to me for over one hundred years. I am merciful and long-suffering. It brings me no joy to judge you. But you have hardened your hearts, scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. I brought you from nothing and exalted you, O America, o America, higher than any other nation. But now you have fallen lower than Sodom. You have sinned greater than Egypt. You have become prouder than Babylon and Persia. You have become more selfish than Rome. You have, you have exalted yourself in your own wisdom, higher than Greece. You have more idols and high places of idolatry and luxury than any Gentile kingdom in history. Your beginning was pure and great, but now the stench of your sin and filth fills my nostrils. I shall cut you in pieces, and you shall reap the harvests of wrath from what you have sown. You shall no longer be the queen of nations. Now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now, as Agag, you shall be hacked in pieces. O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Then to my horror, that massive sword came smashing down on Lady Liberty. When it hit the top of her head, there was a blinding flash of light, and that sword split her in two, right down the middle. Then the sword came again and again against her. It divided her in pieces. As the sword would finish each strike, fires would burst forth. I heard terrible explosions. The vision of the statue ended with an earthquake as it was hacked into pieces and sunk into the harbor. I was weeping and crying out to God for mercy. <clears throat> Never had I seen the sight of God before. I had only really known the love and goodness of Him. Never had I seen the wrath of the Almighty. Then, as if I was watching from a zoomed-in close-up, the dream shifted, and I started started to zoom outward from New York Harbor and started traveling in the air over America. What I saw was horror beyond anything I've ever seen. I saw the United States seem to crack in two with a giant earthquake right down the middle. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant, giant wave of water from the ocean. I saw a massive earthquake that just seemed to crack off the coast of California. It reminded me of a saltine cracker that just cracked in two. The great cities along the west coast just fell into the ocean all the way from Mexico up to Alaska, and giant waves flooded inland until much of the west coast just wasn't there. It had disappeared into the Pacific Ocean. Then I saw three giant rocket missiles that took off into the air. Two came out from the ocean waters, and one came from land and traveled a great distance. All of them blew up in the air, one, two, and three, in the upper atmosphere within five minutes of each other. It was out near space. There were terrible nuclear bombs. But the last one was the biggest, and it created a huge mushroom cloud over the Midwest part of America. Then the ground shook, and everything just went black. There wasn't any electric light coming out of any homes. Then candles began to be lit and fires and a little light was seen. There were other nuclear explosions and many people perished throughout the nation. There was just twisted metal and charred debris in cities that once were tall and majestic. There was widespread looting and gangs roaming about everywhere with guns, stealing whatever food and supplies they could find. Then I saw what looked like elite riot police by the thousands go into communities and even cities, force the people out of their homes and brought into what looked like concentration camps. Some, but not all, of these police armies had light blue helmets on. 
Hundreds of thousands of people were arrested in this way. Many would not, quote, cooperate and were just shot and left dead in their homes. But there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters. Revival broke out and great evangelists and prophets and apostles rose up and began to preach to thousands outdoors. And many were saved and were born again. Miracles of provision, multiplication of food and water, and astonishing healings occurred. Millions of people cried out to God, and he heard and answered. I knew that this was not just happening in America, but the great tribulation was upon them, and all over the world these calamities were also taking place. I saw multitudes of tribulation saints refusing to renounce Jesus as Lord. They were starving, many of them, but still refused to take the stamp on their bodies so they could eat and live. There was what looked like kiosks that were in every little town. They advertised food and water, but only if you went inside them and took the electronic mark. Some went in, bowed down to a holographic movie image and movie images of the Antichrist, and were branded in their hands and foreheads with an electronic tattoo-like stamp. When they came out, if they came out, they had a zombie-like look. Their minds and souls were gone. It looked like they had a spiritual lobotomy. Then these, these immediately joined the armies of those police units and were given weapons after they were fed and drank and rested in that kiosk. They were like robots doing the Antichrist's bidding. I knew that they were lost forever. But quite a few did not make it out. They were tortured mentally and physically inside that kiosk thing. But if they still refused the mark of the beast, there was a laser that shot through their brain and heart and sliced their heads off. Then they were immediately incinerated. Nothing but ashes remained. This was the most horrifying of all. It made the Nazi death camps look like a picnic, if that is possible. Millions of people were executed in this way via computer systems automatically with such precision and efficiency that I marveled that something like this was even possible and could take place on such a large scale. The technology was more advanced than I had ever seen. Then I was back looking at that terrible angel of the Lord, and he said, Warn everyone, flee from the wrath to come. Repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray that you may escape these things that are shortly to happen and to stand in the presence of the Lord. These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close and it is too late. That's the, that's what I wrote, the vision. Maurice, it's one of the most intense prophetic dreams I've ever heard or read. Um, when you woke up, did, did you have vivid memory of all the details of the dream? Did you immediately start writing it down? Yes, the the, the Holy Spirit told me to 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 write it down immediately and and then it was he also reminded me of it I, it's like i heard it i experienced it again as i wrote it I, I heard i mean every word everything um it was very i was very troubled it took me a couple hours to just i i couldn't move really for for a while and then and it took me several days to just kind of get over it but i wrote it down right away because i've learned that you know i'm I mean, I just obeyed, obey, mm-hmm. almost like a scribe. I feel like I was just, just, uh, I wasn't really uh, even writing the words. He, the, the Lord was helping me write the words. Mm-hmm. I, you know, just at, at the surface level, I, I see two things here. I, I see, I see the destruction of America f- for her sins, a direct punishment for rebellion um it's it's as though america had morphed into babylon right and was judged and then after america was destroyed then tribulation began that's that's the way i'm reading this have you had those same thoughts 
Well, what I felt was that this was actually something that happened a- after the tribulation. I, I think, I, of course, I believe in, uh, you probably know, and, you know, we have different views of different parts of the body, but I believe in a, in a rapture. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, this also, and this is what's so amazing about everything that Lord has given me um, over the last, nearly 30, 30 years now, almost 30 years, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's been completely consistent. And <clears throat> from the other things that God has shown me about America, uh, he, he calls America Babylon, but he says, come out of her, my people, that you partake not with her, and, and that Babylon shall be judged by fire, and that there are different kinds of Babylon in the Bible. But <clears throat> right now, I believe that that the restrainer is still in the earth. We praying, and God has held back many of these things. And uh, as long as we're here, we can pray, but not we can't stop all of them. But we can we can cry out for mercy. But this seemed like, you know, I mean, God certainly seemed like that. This is it, you know, and it is the judgment of of the of America once she has fully given herself to Babylon. Mm-hmm. And I think that. It's it seems to be upon us, and we see it on the wall. The watchmen on the wall. We see, you know, this is coming, and uh, you know, I don't think we have much time left. But as you said, we can still repent and turn to God. God can extend the time. He He's a God of mercy, and I I I have to hope that. I have to believe that. Otherwise, I would despair. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the beginning of the of the dream. It starts out with the Statue of Liberty, the Lady. Uh, Liberty in yeah. the New York Harbor. Uh, two thoughts come to my mind. First of all, few Americans know that the Statue of Liberty is a f- Freemason idol. It, it was, yes, it that's was, right from France. Yes, right? the French Freemasons donated it to America, so that uh, it's an idol. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I, I know. Wow, Red, really? I didn't think that that's true. It's, it's an like idol. Family. Yeah, it's yeah. an idol. It's 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 a goddess. It's a mm-hmm. goddess standing there. It came from the Freemasons. Um, uh, you know, from the French Revolution, which was one of the most wicked things that ever took place in in recent centuries. Um, but the second thing is what I see is that the angelic sword coming against the Statue of Liberty. And you're you're not the first person, Maurice, over the years. That has, that has been on this program who had a dream about the Statue of Liberty being decapitated. Mm. This is a recurring theme in mm-hmm. prophetic dreams. I can go back six, seven, eight years and think of various wow. guests who had dreams about the Statue of Liberty being decapitated. Mm-hmm. But the first thing that comes to my mind is that it, the Statue of Liberty in the in the mind of the American people represents freedom and liberty. So when the Statue of Liberty is decapitated, so is freedom and liberty. Mm. America goes into into total um, anarchy, goes into uh, a tyrannical police state, tyranny, slavery. What the Lord told me back in in 98 when I had the vision at TBN, and Maurice, the Holy Spirit, expanded that vision over several months mm. in May, June, July of, of 1998. And, and he, he and when I say expanded, as I would seek the Lord about the things that I saw, he expanded my understanding, my revelation of what that vision was and what it represents. And I've been aware that, well, I would say this, the one thing, Maurice, that I have been reluctant to talk about on the air over the years that I saw in that vision was the thing that just, which terrifies me more than what I saw with the buildings falling down and the burning and and everything, but that was the slavery. Mm -hmm. I saw the American people become slaves. The survivors became slaves. They went into slavery. Mm -hmm. There were foreign troops in the land and they were enslaved. And if you survived what took place in the land, the next nightmare was slavery. 
And that's and, right, and, and that's what I saw also. Yes, and that's there, that's no it, it's liberty. been so horrific. Yeah. You know, the memory of that vision is so is still so troubling to me. I still have difficulty verbalizing it and telling the American people the end result of this will be slavery. You, you're going to become slaves. But you have, but you have to understand that we have no capacity in our our generations to understand that we have had no suffering we've had no war we've had no <clears throat> we don't know what it's like we 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 just it's like uh that's just some, something we've read in history books and we don't even know what that is and so it's not real until it happens but the scary thing is that it will happen so fast that the collapse will be so fast and it will be so terrible Sudden destruction. Sudden, and 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 that's. But it's like Israel. Whenever, whenever our people were, you know, in the the Jewish, if you read in the Bible, whenever we were, <clears throat> whenever we were blessed, we turned to idols, and then when something would happen, God would have to bring us back, and then we cry out to God, and uh, it, it's it's just it's just the fallen nature I, I i guess it's this man mm-hmm. but the, the the difference between america and the other nations is that we've been given more light we've been given so much by god and uh, we're we our calling is great and and our responsibility is great and that's why the judgment is so severe i think that's right. my that's just my that's opinion. a very very good point often people write to me they when they hear me for the first time they get very upset and they write to me and uh mr wiles why do you only criticize america's sins other nations are sinful why aren't you criticizing them and my reply is first of all god sent me to america all right. He sent Ezekiel to his own people. He told Ezekiel, I'm not sending you to a foreign land. I'm sending you to your own people. And I'm yes, going to make sir. your forehead as hard as their forehead because they are stubborn. I'm going to make you stubborn. And so Ezekiel and the Israelites butted heads. They were rebellious, and he kept warning them what was going to happen. The second, the second yeah. thing, Maurice, you just said, and that is other nations have not embraced Christianity like America embraced it. And we were recognized as, quote, a Christian nation. People laugh at it now. They mock us. And rightfully so, because we're, 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 we are an embarrassment to God to say that we're a Christian nation. And so he has to deal with us because we knew the truth. We, we tasted of the goodness of the Lord and we spit it out. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned Ezekiel because as you read the prophet Ezekiel, you you see this phrase over and over, and they shall know that I am the Lord, or I am I am the Most High, I am the One True God, and it's always after the judgments. Then and they shall know, and and until now, it's like in in Egypt also. Uh, you know, the they say, oh, those are not judgments of God. We can do that too. We can make snakes. We can make blood out of the water. We, you know, and they're explaining it away and having climate change worship services in the in the Congress or whatever, you know, and saying all these. Uh, uh, you know, in trying to explain away what has already come, which has been the beginning of judgments, but it's going to get so severe that that people will have to admit this is the hand of God. This is, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And but we have been given a different kind of Christianity uh, that that has just sort of taken all the holiness and judgment out of the Bible and just take our favorite passages. Now, I love the promises of God. I speak them every day. I believe all those things. But but you have to understand he's a holy God, and he will separate the righteous from the wicked. And so it's going to get to the place where <clears throat> it'll be so severe uh, that people e- will either shake their fists at God or they will fall on their faces and cry out to God to save them. It won't be like, well, you know, the climate changed. (laughs) 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it got hotter. Yeah, or warmer. It's going to get real or, hot. Or, it's going to get real hot. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like and molten so lava says, hot. Right. It's going to get very, very clear that that this is the hand of God. And, uh, uh, I mean, I just tell people, read their Bibles. Read the Bible. And don't just just pick your favorite little passages, but read the whole Bible. And you'll see that God is a God of holiness and judgment, as well as goodness and mercy and love and blessing. And he's a, he's a, there's the well, see, wrath the, of God. The, the American church has forgotten the holiness of God. There is no fear of God in the American church anymore. That's true. There's no fear. But, they don't. They don't mean, think are, he'll do anything. Right. 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 He's he's a uh, for the a large portion of of the body of uh, the church. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, Laodicean church is God is is a mixture of Santa Claus. Um, a leprechaun and uh, and uh, you know, I don't know uh, some some sort of talisman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not. It's Santa Claus. It has nothing to do with with anything uh, that he really is a great king. Uh, uh, the, and he the wrath of God. See, we we don't understand, and our our generation has not known war. We have not known the, the the horrors of of what went on in Europe, and we've never had in America an invasion or a uh, we, we've we we've been the sweet land of liberty. We have been we have been completely shielded, and so we have a generation now that is our, our children. Uh, entitlement, selfish, they're like br- brats, little little three-year-old brats. Yes. And but, and they treat God like, I, you know, give me, give me, give me, I'm Jimmy. I take, give me all you can give me now, you know. Reese, your, your dream is the second <clears throat> dream that has come to my attention in the past two months that has rattled my world. Um, it was January or February, I've, I've lost track of. Um, when this happened, but the other dream that really was that really rocked my world came from a four year old mm. in the Amazon jungle. Wow. My my daughter Carissa and and her son in law Marshall and our grandchildren moved to Ecuador in July two thousand twelve. They started an orphanage in the Amazon jungle. Wow. And Praise w- God. Yeah, it's awesome work that they're doing there, and and they're rescuing little girls that are being sold into the sex traffic rings. I mean, it's just it's even there. Oh yes, I didn't know. Really? I didn't know that the pedophiles were going into the jungles to kidnap or buy little ten, eleven, twelve year old girls and sell them around the world. Oh, because they can take these little girls out of the jungles and nobody knows about it. So, the, so Carissa has rescued some of those children. Um, anyhow, one little child, her name is Maria. She just turned four just a few weeks ago. So this, when she had this dream, she was still three. Maria is the cutest little thing you've ever seen. Uh, coal black hair and eyes, and she's just adorable. And she's she's cute. She's smart and she's funny and she knows it you know <laughs> yeah. she's she's that Precocious. type of yes yes but here's the thing when when carissa marshall got her uh almost two years ago uh at age two uh she was she had been abandoned by her parents uh she was left in a a milk crate for days without food and water oh my god she was full of parasites she had been badly beaten she suffered head trauma uh, she was in the hospital for weeks, and she cannot speak. She can only say a few words. Uh, her sentences are, are like two to three word sentences. And my wife, Susan, taught her sign language. And so between sign la- language and some words and some winks and smiles, she can communicate with you, okay? Oh, well, so he- she was damaged by that beating. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And to this and day, the, she the can't speak. Yes. So what happened was... Uh, um, 
on a Saturday afternoon, uh, Maria was taking a nap, um, and Carissa felt the Holy Spirit telling her, lay your hands on the child and pray that she speaks. Carissa thought wow. God was healing her of her speech impediment. But instead, wow. when the child woke up, she told Carissa that she had a dream. Now, that particular dream was prophetic, but it, I'm not going to go tell it on the radio because it was private. It was directed towards Carissa and Marshall and their ministry. I'll just leave it at that. It was it was prophetic direction for them. Okay, But the next Saturday, it happened again. She woke up from a nap told Carissa uh, she's putting her hand her head down on her hands trying to tell Carissa she had a dream and she pointed at her eyes and now she can't say her name Maria she says Mia she mm-hmm. pointed at her eyes she said Mia see Jesus mm-hmm. and Carissa said what did Jesus do and and she lifted her hands up in the air and she brought them down fast she said Jesus come down yeah. And then she said, with fire. And then she said, everything on fire. People, cars, houses. Then she spoke my name and my wife's name, and she said, out. And then she pointed to her lips, and she said, Jesus, say, say it. And Carissa said, what did Jesus say to say? And she said, he come down with fire, everything burn up. Uh, Maurice, that's yeah. from a four-year-old in the Amazon who can barely speak, and yeah. then I get your dream, and I just want to put this, and I do this kindly and lovingly, Maurice, because, uh, man, I, you're my brother, and I, I, right, I'm not right. saying this in any way to be argumentative, but I want you to consider the possibility that this dream is not going to happen after the church has been raptured, but this is a prophetic warning mm. to the people of the United States of America. You are about to lose everything, and you are going to experience tribulation, including the church in this country. Have you, are you, have you considered the possibility that God is giving us a one more divine warning that fire is ready to fall oh i i'm convinced of that i i i know that i but you, you think you're not going to be here maurice <laughs> well i know that's true I, see this is what i'm asking you are you willing to say father am i missing it mm, are you telling us that this is going to happen possibly within weeks or months because we're, well, this I've, country's getting ready to go to war with Russia. Well, I know one thing. There's nothing left to be fulfilled in Bible prophecy before he comes. Well, the way way there is, the falling away and the revealing of the Antichrist. Well, yes, right. I know what you mean. Okay, so the the Antichrist has not been revealed. No. So the Lord comes after the Antichrist has been revealed. So what I'm saying is we're getting ready to go to war with, with Russia. Our leaders really have lost so? their... I, I, yes. haven't, I haven't been following the news in the last couple of days, but oh, no. is it, has it escalated? That, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Putin is not going to back down. Putin is not going to back down. Right. And, well, and the leaders saying. of America and the West are insane. They've lost their mind. He might be the Gog of, of, the, of the Ezekiel, uh, you know, the Gog, the leader from Russia that invades. It, it might be. I... I don't know. He may be. He may be a whip in God's hand, right? Uh Simply to bring chastisement on a rebellious America. Well, you know, I, I do. Of course, I, I consider. um, I've, I've never. I, I know so little. You know, I, Mm -hmm. I don't claim to know everything, but I, I do believe the separation from light and darkness that's in First Thessalonians five and the people of God and the. For, uh, for uh, verse nine, you know, I do. I am very set as far as the my thinking, as far as the as you know about the rapture. Mm-hmm. But I am not. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of an unusual guy because I get all of these. I've gotten for thirty years. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, 
all kinds of warnings about judgment in America and 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 the world and Israel and I've seen uh you know I've seen a lot of these things and the Lord has, has showed me that that I know for sure that that there is coming a time of great trouble and it, it's going to be worse Yeshua said it'll be worse than the it's ever been yes. on the earth and yes. even uh, even terrible regimes like you know Nazi uh, Germany or Stalin purges or you know all of that uh, in a and 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 many terrible tragedies in history have happened and especially the Jewish people we've our people over and over have experienced uh, uh you know terrible things and we've survived and come out of them so you know I I do recognize that mm-hmm. but I I also I have a hope. I mean, I believe that Yeshua said, when we see these things, look up, you know, that we have a... I know the kingdom's coming. <laughs> I yes. know he's coming for us. Yes, absolutely. But, but it also says in Second Peter that this world is... Uh, 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 is it won't, won't be judged by water or flood, but by fire. It's, it is waiting for fire, the judgment of the great day, you know. So That's right. I, That's right. my, just the Bible itself. I mean, I believe it. But Babylon so. burns first before the world. And we may be Babylon. And so we may burn up before the rest of the world. That's well, the point I I'm think, making, Maurice. The United I, States of America may be the last day's Babylon. Because there's, as of right now, there's no other nation on the earth that comes close to being having all the attributes of of Babylon. Time will tell. I mean, it, right. you know, it, it could take another 100, 200 years to create another nation like the United States of America. But right now, I mean, we're, we're looking like Babylon. Well, no other land has had such luxury. And so we are a nation of kings. I mean, kings and queens and other generations didn't live as well as the middle class family in America. You That's know? right. And, and and never have we had never has there been such uh, uh, prosperity and blessing and 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 ease and uh, uh, and indulgence decadence uh, and a selfishness and I see all those things I think that's a falling away you know we fall there we the last hundred years America morally has come we're not. We're we're not where we were at all, and so I, right. I see, uh, and you know, so time will tell, and uh, we occupy till he comes, you know. Well, let's close with the last words of that angel of the Lord in your dream: "Warn okay. everyone, flee yes. from the wrath to come, mm-hmm. repent, and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray yes. that you may escape these things that are." shortly to happen and to stand in the presence of the Lord. These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close and it is too late. Yes, sir. Now, there are people right now listening to Marisa and me all over the world. Yes, Lord. And the Holy Spirit is beckoning you right now. You're feeling that conviction. What you're, what's on you right now is called conviction. It's Lord. it's the Holy Spirit dealing with your soul. Lord, have mercy on me. And your Heavenly Father, your Creator, loves you. He's not angry at you. He doesn't seek to judge you, punish you, hurt you. He's seeking to save you. He desires you to live with Him forever. But because of His mercy and His goodness and His love, He's, he's warning you. He's warning the human race that the age of man is coming to an end. Yes, that's 6, right. 6,000 years, it's over. It's time for the history books to be closed. And it's time for the new Jerusalem to appear. And only those who have believed on the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Son of God, will be permitted to live in new Jerusalem with Almighty God. And the only way that you can enter into New Jerusalem is that your name be found in the book of life. And your name can only be in the book of life if you have believed on the name of Jesus, that you repent of your sins, that you turn from your wicked ways, 
that you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and Messiah, and that you be baptized in water, that you that you go the rest of your life living for God. That's what you have to do. And this yeah. is the hour, and God is crying out to you one more time. He's seeking your soul. There's no guarantee, no assurance. He's going to come back to you again. You cannot be saved without the Holy Spirit calling you. You yeah. don't have the 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 option of saying, I will decide when I will go to God to be saved. You don't have that option. Now is the day of salvation. Now. <clears throat> and only Come those called now. by the Holy Spirit when he calls can be saved. And if you continue to spurn the call of God, if you continue to stiffen your neck against God calling you to salvation, there's a day he's going to walk away from you and the door of grace will shut in your face and you cannot be saved. And and even worse, you know, uh, brother, even worse than this terrible tribulate, the terrible things that are coming, there's eternal hell, which is, which God doesn't want you to go to a devil's hell. That's right. Mm-hmm. What you s- described in that dream is is not hell. That, but that it the might worst, be hell the earth, worst of that, not, that's yeah. that's not the the worst of it is not hell. Eternal and, uh, separation from God. You must give your life. To Jesus, Amen. Why don't you pray? Pray, uh, just pray with uh, those that are listening that that need to be right with God. Yes, let's pray right now. Now, if you are unsaved and the Holy Spirit's dealing with you right now, let's let's pray together. Oh God, oh God, I confess to you, I confess to you that I have broken your commandments. That I have broken your commandments. And I deserve the penalty of death. And I deserve the penalty of death. But I believe you sent your son to save me. Pray this with me out loud. Yes. But I believe you sent your son to save me. And now I call on the name of Jesus Christ to save my soul. I call upon the name of Jesus Christ to save my soul. Just Wash away again. my sins in the blood Wash of Jesus. Wash away my sins. And remember them no more. And remember them no more. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. And when the angels come to gather the harvest, let my soul be gathered with them. When the angels come to gather the harvest, may my soul be gathered with them. And I will confess Jesus Christ all the days of my life. I will confess Jesus Christ as my Lord all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. All right, I believe, Maurice, many people all over the world just entered in to eternity. Yes. Eternity began the moment you believed on the name of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know so many religion, even Christian religion, tells you you have to do all these things to be to, to for, for God to like you and accept you, but Jesus did everything in our place, and He offers this as a gift. And you know, some of us as <clears throat> different parts of the, the 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 church, and we we might believe a little different theologically, but we all believe that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. That's what really matters. That's right. And God will straighten us all out with our. We don't. We don't know everything. We. We. The Bible isn't totally hundred percent clear on certain things. We have to trust Him, but we do know Jesus is coming for us, and we, there is a heaven. There's a wonderful place called heaven. I got to visit there a couple years ago, three years ago, and changed my life. I. I had a vision. I got to go. I know it's a real place, and and heaven's a real place. But if you prayed that prayer with us and you meant it, and you really surrendered from your heart then uh, I, I want to tell you, you're brand new on the inside. God did a miracle. He, he, he made you a part of his family. You came from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. You joined his family, and that's, that's, that's what, why we're talking today. That's, that's right. why God gives all of these visions and end times and why 
uh, you're on also and the, the the true news and warning people and saying get right with God. Thank God he's 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 calling out to us. Come come in, come in, like the angel said, to come into the ark. The ark was saved animals, but the spiritual ark is what Jesus prepared for us, that, that we can escape from the wrath and the, the terrible uh, penalties of our sin. For God must judge sin. He's a holy God, but he's also a God of love. And Jesus paid the penalty. He was judged in my place. God poured his wrath upon his own son so that you and I, we could receive forgiveness. And his blood washes us and cleanses us and delivers us. And we're made new and our slate is wiped clean. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. <laughs> that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who would ever believe on him shall not perish but shall have Life everlasting. That's the message to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. We're in dangerous times. And whether um, this dream that Maurice saw happens in reality in, in the coming weeks or months, or whether it it's could. 10 I, or 20 I, know, years I, I from mean, now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. God is showing us the future. And there is a there is a parallel message in this dream with so many other dreams that people have experienced and shared on this radio program. And they all talk about the Statue of Liberty being decapitated, liberty being taken away, and the people being taken into slavery. But they also talk about many people being saved right. in the midst of that great trouble. So, again, we want you to stay focused not on don't become alarmed over the tribulation that is in this dream but stay focused on the promise that Jesus Christ is coming back for Amen. his church Amen. that's the important thing never lose sight that Jesus Christ will come back for those who love him Maurice Sklar I thank you so much it's good talking to you again Oh and, yeah, uh, my honor. Thank you for having me uh, on on your show, and and I, I just I I I don't like those kind of revelations, but I have to be faithful to share them too. Not, yes, not just the 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 good stuff, but I know. Also and you you have been you've been faithful. Uh, many people have dreams like this, and they tell me privately, but they refuse to tell them publicly. And uh, but you've never been that way. You've always been obedient to the Lord, and and you've not been afraid to go out in public and say, "Look, this is what the Lord showed me." And uh, you know, when we're watchmen, if we don't do what God is telling us to do and say what we're supposed to say, then the blood of the unsaved people will be on our hands, and oh, uh-huh. that is a very solemn warning that I don't want to. Um, face from the Lord. Uh, what no, he told Ezekiel is, is, is quite, quite troubling. So we never want to have that kind of sin of rebellion on us as ministers of the gospel and be afraid to tell the people what the Lord has shown us. Maurice, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you coming on True News today. God bless. You're always welcome here. Maurice Sklar, website mauricesklar.com. Thank you, Maurice. Oh, you're welcome. God bless. Well, I feel impressed to end the program by reading some excerpts from the vision given to evangelist A.A. A. Allen in 1954. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to read the entire vision. You can find it on the Internet. Mr. Allen was standing atop the Empire State Building. He could see the Statue of Liberty. He heard the Lord speak the words of Second Chronicles 16 Verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. There was a coin-operated telescope on top of the Empire State Building, and this was 1954. Mr. Allen dropped a dime in it, and the telescope's timer began ticking, indicating that he would only be able to see things through the telescope for a limited amount of time. 
When he looked into the telescope, something supernatural happened. The telescope supernaturally enabled him to see all of North America. He could see from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. And to his amazement, the Statue of Liberty was standing in the Gulf of Mexico. He could see New York City, the Great Lakes, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New Orleans, and the Rocky Mountains. Reading directly from his personal account of the vision, he said, As I looked suddenly from the sky, I saw a giant hand reach down. The gigantic hand was reaching out toward the Statue of Liberty. In a moment, her gleaming torch was torn from her hand, and in it instead was placed a cup. And I saw protruding from that great cup a giant sword, shining as if a great light had been turned upon its glistening edge. Never before had I seen such a sharp, glistening, dangerous sword. It seemed to threaten all the world. As the great cup was placed into the hand of the Statue of Liberty, I heard these words, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more because of the sword which I will send. And I heard these words. I recognized them from Jeremiah 25. He said, I was amazed to hear the Statue of Liberty speak. I will not drink. Then as the voice of, the th- of thunder I heard again the voice of the Lord saying, Ye shall certainly drink. Then suddenly the giant hand forced a cup to the lips of the Statue of Liberty, and she became powerless to defend herself. The mighty hand of God forced her to drink every drop from the cup. As she drank the bitter dregs, these were the words I heard. Should ye be utterly unpunished, ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword. Upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, when the cup was withdrawn from the lips of the Statue of Liberty, I noticed the sword was missing from the cup, which could only mean one thing. The contents of the cup had been consumed. I knew that the sword merely typified war and destruction, which is no doubt on the way. Then as one drunken on too much wine, I saw the Statue of Liberty become unsteady on her feet and began to stagger and to lose her balance i saw her splashing in the gulf of mexico trying to regain her balance i saw her stagger again and again and fall to her knees and i saw her desperate attempts to regain her balance and rise to her feet again my heart was moved as never before with compassion for her struggles but as she staggered there in the gulf Once again, I heard these words, drink ye and be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I send among you. As I watched, I wondered if the Statue of Liberty would ever be able to regain her feet, if she would ever stand again. As I watched, it seemed that with all her power, she struggled to rise and finally staggered to her feet and stood there swaying drunkenly. I felt sure that at any moment she would fall again. It seemed, I seemed overwhelmed with the desire to reach out my hand to keep her head above water, for I knew that if she ever fell again, she would drown in the Gulf of Mexico. Then as I watched, another amazing thing happened. Far to the northwest, just over Alaska, a huge black cloud arose. As it rose, it was as black as night. It seemed to be in the shape of a man's head. As it continued to rise, I observed two light spots in the black cloud. It rose further, and a gaping hole appeared. My friends, read the entire vision. Go to the Internet, look up A.A. Allen's vision, and read it. It's coming true now. 